Yeah. She comes. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yes. Hello, Holy Ghost. Hello. Thank you.
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. When you make a miracle work or a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. When you make a miracle work or a promise keeper, light in the darkness.
Yes, Jesus, every enemy. 
Yes, 
as we partake together. This is the fact that He died for us, take yes. away our sin, rise again, yes. and unleash us. Yes. Unleash us to whatever we're going to do for Him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks for being yes. alive. So we, we can see, not with the natural eyes, but with the spiritual eyes. So, Father, we can continue to proclaim the kingdom of God wherever you send us. Father, thank you for an opening of our eyes. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. Thank you for Calvary, O oh Lord Jesus. My sin has washed away. Oh God Almighty, we are sanctified. We stand here today as the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. morning and say we need this yeah. we need this fellowship we need this connection Amen. and the whole thing being unleashed yes. we are unleashed to something greater yes. something greater than us yes. Jesus yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. and so I am just so delighted to be here I, with my wife and Amen. we are just we've been looking forward to convocation yes. We've been looking forward to a time to reconnect, yes. rekindle, refire. Yes. And, uh, you know, we as ministers, we need this time. Yes. We need this time yes. to yes. rub shoulders with one another, hug each other, yes. and encourage each other yes. in the most holy faith. And so our next speaker really needs no introduction. <laughs> I believe that everyone knows this great man of God. He's been a great man of God in, in our lives. Yes. And uh, he has ministered to me and he has helped me in some areas of ministry in time when I needed it the most. And so we're just grateful for Bishop Ebenezer Sifa, who is here to bring forth the word here this morning. And I know it's going to be a stirring word with fire and passion. And so we love him. He's going to be coming our way uh, next week. And... Uh, Let's just give the man of God a warm welcome here. Bishop Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hey. Hey. We want to thank God for opportunity given to me to share the word of God with you. I want to thank the executive of GCMF USA for this great convention or convocation that you invited me to come and speak. I don't take it for granted. May God bless this fellowship. Amen. I also want to thank God for our president a great man that God has given to us. Yes. Yes. And we thank God for his leadership. That's right. We all have to continually support him and pray for him. Yes. That whatever God has put in his spirit, God will give him the strength to be able to fulfill it. Yes. Yes. Thank God for President for Canada, Ted, who is doing a very great job, and the Vice President of GCMF International. Amen. We say God bless you. And I want to say God bless you all. Amen. Especially my friend, El Adams and the wife. <laughs> Amen. Miss you. It's always good to see you. Amen. This man is a great man. Yes. And I just love his spirit. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Westman, thank you for powerful communion. That's another good friend. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Tad. <laughs> God bless you. Share and Doros, God bless you, and all of you, God bless you. Amen. 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 Somebody shout, Amen. 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 This morning, we're going to feast on the Word of God. Amen. Nothing more Amen. but the Word. Amen. Last night, our president did a selling job. Yes. He yes. made it plain for yes. us yes. Mm -hmm. yes. to unleash God. Mm -hmm. yes. Let Him do whatever He intends to do in our lives. Yes. See, the, the good news is that God does not try to do anything. He doesn't try. 
what God intends to do, he, do, he does it. Yes. Yes. He doesn't try. That's right. God does not try to do anything. What he intends to do, he does it. That's right. And that makes him a great God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you should be happy that you are serving a living God. Amen. Yes. Living God. He made my work very easy for me this morning because he did all the job last night. <laughs> <laughs> so he made it very easy for me. But if you have a pen, if you have a notebook, if you have an iPad, anything, you can put something down, do something. And after I finish preaching, I have up to 12, but I'm going to do up to maybe 11.40. There are a few things the Lord have laid on my heart to do. Pray for one or two people who will enter into that session. So just open up your spirit and let's have a good time this morning yeah, in yeah. the presence of God. I want to project on the team, God, let God arise. Yeah. Let God Amen. arise. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, let God arise in your life. Okay, look at your neighbor again. Those who don't want to look at the face, forget and look at the nose. <laughs> and look at your neighbor and say, let God arise in your life. Let God arise in your life. I'm going to say it for the last time. If you say it with confidence, with boldness, you are 150% through the message. Amen. So look at your neighbor again and say, Let God arise in your life. Let God arise in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Moses, how are you? I love you, man. Amen. In the book of Psalm 68, verse 1 and 2, Psalm 68. I've asked them to put it projecting on the screen so you can look at it from the screen and follow me. Now, what this? Let God arise, right? Yes. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Amen. Now, watch this. Let's stand there for a few minutes. Now, it begins with let God arise. Let him arise. That word let, some of some of the Bible translation, you don't see the word let. They use the may, may God arise. Mm -hmm. The original meaning is not may, it's let. Yeah. <laughs> but no problem with that translation. But it's not, it should be let, not may God arise. No, it's let God arise. Yes. The same word is used in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, let the mind of Christ be in you. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Let. Now, watch this. When the Bible says let, a simple means allow, yeah. permit. Unleash. Yeah. Unleash. You must unleash God. Yeah. You must permit God. You must allow God to do something for you. Yeah. That's right. You must untie the hand of God. Yeah. Before He can cause your enemies to be scattered. If you don't unleash Him, if you don't permit Him, if you don't allow him, he can't do anything for you. That's right. Amen. That's right. Good. Good. Should I break it down? <laughs> now, if you move from 68 to 78, he's going to explain to you why he's telling the people of Israel to let God arise. Yes. You can Tie the hand of God by your behavior or attitude. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apostle Eugene talked about leech yesterday, and that is that that's a, a rope that is used to tie dog. That's a leash. Mm -hmm. You can also tie God by your attitude or yes, behavior. Yes. Yes. Sometimes God is not moving in our life because of our attitude. That's 
That's right. Oh, good. We come to church, we crack, we jump, but our attitude, behavior, yes. is not what it's supposed to be. That's right. That's right. And by our Amen. attitude and behavior, we limit God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We leash God. But it is time for us to unleash him. Amen. It is time for us to permit him. Yes. It is yes. time for us to allow him so he can arise. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you don't unleash him, you don't permit him, you don't allow him, God will not force himself on you. That's right. He will right. watch. That's right. But remember, the battle is of the Lord, but you, so you can't fight it yourself. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Now watch Psalm 78. I came to 68 and moved to 78. Sometimes your parent will talk to you. Don't try to make friends with this person or don't go to this place. And sometimes you don't know why daddy is telling you don't do this. Right. He just tells you don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And later, he will come and explain to you yes. why mm -hmm. I said what I said. Yeah. Yeah. So God said something in 68. Now, in 78, he's going to tell you why he said what he said in 68. Let me say it again. He made a statement in 68, let go. Now, 78, he's going to explain why he's saying let go arise. Yeah. So, 78, 10 to 11. Now, let's read. They kept not the covenant of God. And refused to walk in his law. Mm -hmm. The people of Israel, the children of Israel, God did so much for them. And the Bible says it came to a time in the people of Israel, they failed to walk with God. Mm, yes, hear it. Attitude. Yeah. Behavior. Yeah. You list God by your attitude. That's right. By failing to walk, refusing to walk with God. Go to verse number 11. Verse number 11. And they forgot, they forgot his works and his wonders that he did show them. Mm -hmm. God did so many wonders for them on the, on the wilderness. Open the Red Sea for them. Yes. That's not all that God did. They forgot the works of God. Come on, right. Amen. Mm. If you, re if you forget where God brought you from, right. and you think you get to where you are by your own strength and wisdom, oh, yeah. you tie the hand of God. God said, okay, yeah. you think you did it by yourself? Yeah. Let me get out. Do it again. Yeah. Do it yourself and see. Right. So most people, God is just pulling away from you, and you are doing things with no unshame. You do it by yourself because you forgot where God brought you from. The people of Israel forgot all that God did for them. So verse 10 and 11 is telling us they refused to walk with God. Number two, they forgot about what God was doing. Now go to verse number 17. Let's jump to verse 17. Now what is this? And they say yet more against by provoking the most high in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Your sin provoke God. When we go contrary to what God is saying, we provoke Him yeah. and we lift Him. Yes, we do. We tie Him down by our sins. Go to 22. Jump to 22. Because they believe not in God. So, one of the things you can do to lead God is unbelief. That's, That's right. right. That's yep. right. You lead God by your unbelief. You tie yes. His hand. Come on. God cannot do so much for you if you don't believe in Him. So by your own belief, and number two, and trusted not in his salvation. So not trusting God, you leash God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hold him back. You restrain him. Yeah. You limit him. Yeah, you do. Now the whole thing is put in verse 41. Watch verse 41. Verse 41. Let all read together. Go. Yea, they, they came back and tempted God. God. And what? And limit the Holy One of Israel by their attitude, yeah. yes. by the behavior of the people of Israel, they did what they limited the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, Stop limiting God by your attitude. Come on, uh, 
Oh, come on. Look at him with a smile and say, Stop limiting God. Stop limiting his power. Stop limiting his authority. Stop limiting the wisdom of God. Stop limiting God. God is too big to be limited. He's too big. You can't limit God. He's too big. That's right. God told Moses, Go and tell my people. That I'm going to take them out of Egypt onto the promised land. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, when I go and they ask me, who sent me? Uh-huh. What should I say? Yes. God, look at him with a smile. He said, boy, I'm too big to be called by one name. Yeah. I am that yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. I am what you want. Yeah. You want healing? I'm your healer. Right. You want blessing? I'm the blesser. You want provision? I am the provider. Yes, right, yeah. You can't call me by one name. I'm too big. Yeah, Your God is too big for you to limit me. Yeah. Can I limit God? Yes. By this context, you can limit God. Mm-hmm. And that is why we need to unleash Him. That's right. That's why I say, God, I'm taking the limit off. That's right. By my attitude and behavior, I'm taking the limit off. 2023, I want to see your power in my yes. life. Yes. 2023, I want to use yes. me for your glory. 2023, I want to see your power manifesting in my life yes. for the, your name's sake. If you can do that and unleash him, you will see the supernatural power of God in your life. That's right. Let us as a church stop limiting God. For God is too big yes. for you to limit him. Yes. But can you limit God? Yes. How do you limit God? By your attitude. Mm-hmm. And if you can change your attitude, yes. it will affect your altitude. Oh, Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. If you can change your attitude, it will affect your altitude. That's right. If you want to go high, change your attitude. Right. Unleash God and let yes. God be God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say 2023. I'm not going to put any limitation on God. Look at somebody. 2023. I'm not placing limitation of God. By my attitude, by my behavior. I'm going to learn to walk with God. I'm going to take away my unbelief. I'm going to trust God. And let God be God in my life. And let God do what He want to do. Because God is too big for me to limit Him. He has good plan for me. He has good thought for me. The thought He has for me is great. It's good. And I don't want to limit God. He knows your end from the beginning. While you were blood in your mother's womb. He knew exactly what He was going to do. You are where you are. And it is part of the process to take you to where you supposed to be. So stop limiting God. Stop complaining to complicate your case. Stop complaining to limit God and rather believe God and trust God. And if you can believe God and trust God, he will do the supernatural in your life. 2023 unleash him and let him do whatever you want to do in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to take the limit off from God. Look at that, I'm going to take the limit off. Come on. I'm going to take the limit off. Say it one more time. I'm going to take the limit off. Say it for the last time. I'm going to take the limit off. Now watch it. So Bishop, what do we do to limit God? Let me give you some few things that you can do to limit God. By the Bible passage that we read, we realize that one of the things we do to limit God is not walking with God. Yes. Yes. If you don't walk with God, you limit God. Amen. Abraham one time was sitting at the balcony of his house, rocking in a chair. Abraham, rocking in a chair. And three men were passing by. Mm-hmm. Abraham was in his comfort zone, relaxing. Yes. Like yesterday, Pastor David was relaxing here. Yes. Pastor David, can I sit on your chair? I'm already on it. <laughs> Just relaxing. And Abraham saw three men. But he said, let me get out of my comfort zone and approach these three people. He went to the three men and said, Hey, look at your feet. Your feet is too dirty. You need to wash your feet. I, I, I can see you are coming from a far place. Yes. Will you come to my house? Let me. Say, no, we are on assignment. We can't. Abraham said, please come. 
We walk with Abraham to the house. Abraham notifies Sarah, get some food for these strangers. Yes. Sarah had no complaint. She jumped into the kitchen. Yes, amen. The three men washed their feet. And they said, Baba, I said, no, no, no. Just get some food to eat. The men went to eat. While they were eating, they asked Abraham, where is Sarah, your wife? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A year by this time, you will have a baby. Yes. They have been waiting for years. Mm -hmm. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. But because Abraham jumped out of his comfort zone to Thank meet these people, Lord. he unleashed the power of God yes. into the family. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And Sarah said, No, no, I'm not laughing. He said, Because you laugh, you have a son, you call him Isaac, which means laughter. A year by this time, it shall come to pass. Now, watch this. When the men were going, and the Bible said, Abraham walked with them. Mm -hmm. When the three men were going, the Bible said, and Abraham walked with them. And while Abraham was walking with them, the three men said, why should we hide what we're going to do with Abraham? Let us reveal to Abraham. Mm -hmm. We're going to Sodom to destroy it. He said, why? If you find 50 men, will you destroy them? He said, no. If you find 45, he said, no. How, why did they reveal to Abraham? Why did they show it to Abraham? Because he walked yes. with them. Yes, yes. If you walk with them, you hear the voice yes. of God. If you walk with God, if you unleash God by walking with him, he will do supernatural things. He will arise and take care of the problem in your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Unleash God. Mm -hmm. Yes. By getting out of your comfort zone and walk with Him. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, Start walking with God. Start walking with God. God. How do I unleash God? I unleash God by walking with God. How do I unleash God? I can unleash God by the way I see things. Yes. What you see is what you get. Oh, that's good. Whatever you see is what you're going to get. Come on. If you see God is a God of all possibility, Come on. He will show Himself. He's a God of all possibility. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If you can change the way you see things, the things you see will change. Amen. Amen. If you can change the way you are seeing things, the things you are seeing will change. Amen. Amen. So how how do I unleash God? I will let you by seeing God in a different way Amen. in 2023. Amen. He's a miraculous God. He's a powerful God. He's a supernatural God. He's the God of abundance. And will show himself strong in 2023. It is the way I see God. God will do it for me. Amen. Joshua was supposed to fight and take the people of Israel to the promised land. One thing that was hinting Joshua was the war of Jericho. Joshua went to look at the wall and while he was standing there, an angel appeared. He got scared. He said, are you for us or are you against us? Joshua said, I'm the captain of the host of Israel. Amen. You know what the angel told Joshua? He said, boy, you don't have a problem. All you have to do is to see Jericho in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. See Jericho. If you can see Jericho in your hand, you will take over Jericho. Mm -hmm. If you want to unleash God, see God. In a different way. Yeah, that's good. Don't see God the way you see God last 2022, 2021, 2023. See God as a great God, Amen. as a mighty God, yes, as Amen. all powerful God. Yes, yes. And if you see God that way, you're going to get it. Yes, somebody child, hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, Change the way you see God. Look at somebody change, change the, the way, way you see God. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This God we serve is a great God. Amen. This God we serve is a mighty God. This God we serve is a powerful God. Yeah. This God we serve is all powerful. Yeah. This God, somebody say, This God, this God. Yeah. You can't mess up with this God. You can't choke with this God. Amen. You can't. Psalm 48. I didn't give that quotation to you, but somebody can you read for me? Psalm 48. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I didn't give you that quotation, but, but, but it's coming. This God. Somebody say, this God. This God. I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Say, this God. This God. Come on. Go to Psalm 48 quickly. Psalm 48. My time is limited. Verse number 14. Who is reading for me? Psalm 48, verse 14. 
Uh -huh. Psalm 48, verse 14. Read. For this God, God uh -huh. is our God. No, forever. read it again. Read it again. For this God, for this God is our God is our forever God. and ever. Forever and ever. Look at what he said. This God, this God, this God, this God who opens the right sea, this God who rain manna, Amen. this God. If you see Him that way, yeah. He will make all the crooked roads straight. Yeah. Yeah. He will make the impossible possible. Yeah. This God is a great God. This God is a mighty God. This God is a wonderful God. We are serving a God who is going to be our God forever. Amen. Look at someone say, "This God, this yes, God." God. This God I'm talking about. This, this God, God I'm serving. This God I'm talking about. He's the God of all possibility. He make a way when there is no way. When you unleash him, you will see this God is a mighty God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So change the way you see things. If you change the way you see things, you unleash God. And the Bible said the people did not believe. Therefore, the leash God, the limited God by their unbelief. Yes. Change your unbelief and see God at work. If you can change your unbelief, God will arise. If you start believing God that this year, I will see the glory of God. This year, God is going to use me for his own glory. Yes. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Look at someone and say, believe God, believe God, believe God. Yes. You see, God has a desire for you. That's right. There's a desire of God for your life. But the desire is not coming to pass until you position yourself well. Come on. Yes. Psalm 132, verse 13 and to 15. Psalm 132. Come on, let's hear the word of God. For the, for the Lord has chosen Zion. What is Zion? The church. What is Zion? You. You are the Zion. Say, I'm Zion. I'm Zion. I'm Zion. So the Lord have chosen Zion. The Lord have chosen yes, you. Thanks. And have desired it for his habitation. Oh, yeah. God wants to dwell in you. Yes, he does. You are the temple of God. Yeah. God wants to live in you. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. This is the God I'm talking about. Yes. Come on, go to the next verse. Verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14. God wants you to be his habitation. Habitation. Verse 14. Yes, Verse 14 and to 15. Come on, read. Somebody, somebody read. Read. This I'm reading from. He is what? This is where? My rest. This is my rest. This is my rest. Forever. forever. God forever. wants you to be a place forever. where he's resting forever. Are you, are you going to unleash God? Yeah. To make your life his bungalow, his, 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 his home? Amen. And can you imagine if God lives in you 24 7, what is going to happen in your life? <laughs> yeah. You have no reason to complain. That's right. And that is God's desire for you. Verse 15. Come on, look at verse 15. Verse number 15. I somebody read. Abundantly bless. And when you allow God to live in you, to become your habitation, He say, I will abundantly bless you. Amen. Look at someone say, abundant blessing. Abundant blessing. Let me pause there a minute. Give somebody a five and say, abundant blessing. Abundant blessing. Say, say that. Say that. Abund look, look at your neighbor and say, this year God will bless you abundantly. Look at someone this year. Last year in November, latter part of November, I went to London and we gathered some prophets to go for a hideout in November. And why were they hide out in London? On the second day, I heard God clearly speaking to me. Praise and God, God spoke to me three things. Number one, the Lord spoke to me about abundance. Yeah. Yes. Number two, the Lord spoke to me about grace. Yes. Number three, the Lord spoke to me about overflow. Amen. And I said, the economy is so bad. <laughs> in Africa, Ghana, you go and buy something in the morning, in the evening, the price has changed. Inflation is high, 56 percent. Inflation, 56. And you're talking to me about abundance, grace, and overflow? <laughs> give me a sign. And God gave me a sign. He gave me a sign. Amen. Thank you. You know the sign he gave to me? He spoke to me about I'm going to do a mass wedding. That is a wedding involving about not less than three people. And do all of them together the same day. All of them at the same altar. Praise God. And I said, when I was coming to London, I don't have on my five somebody preparing to get married. How am I going to do mass wedding? 
And the Lord shocked me. I said, you do it on the 24th of December. He gave me a date. I said, wow, I won't talk anymore. <laughs> so I put it on 24th of December, and I went back to Ghana. When I got back to Ghana, the next day, somebody came to my office and said, Pastor, the man who promised to marry me in Italy have come home and wanted to get married. I can't believe it. The next two days, another one came. This man have come to make a proposal. We're waiting for you to come and want to do that. To cut the whole long story short, on the 24th of December, as the Lord said, we had a mass wedding. <laughs> and that was a sign to me yes. that 2023, God is bringing abundance. Yes. yes. God is going to give grace to those who seek me. Yes. And the Lord said, I will bless you to be a blessing. Get ready for a blessing beyond measure in 2020. In the midst of the challenges, God will still bless his people. After all, Isaac saw in the midst of famine, they said here he ripped hundredfold. So God can bless you in the midst of Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. How do I unleash God? By believing in God. The next thing, how do I unleash God? By trusting God. Yes. Your trust, someone say trust God, trust yes. God. Shadra, Misha, and Abednego. Yes. They trusted God in the midst of threats. Mm -hmm. If you don't bow to me, I will beg you. And they yes. said, the God I will serve is more than able. Amen. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. That's right. In the book of Jesus, God mad and put the three young men in the fire. Mm -hmm. But because they trusted God, mm -hmm. they unleashed God. And God stepped into the fire himself. Amen. Your trust will lead God into your situation. Yes. And when God stepped into your situation, your story will change. Yeah. I prophesy, may your story change in 2023. Yeah. Yes. Look at someone say, your story will change in 2023. Look at somebody, your story, come on, come on, say it one more time. Your story will change, say it again. Your story will change, say it again, say it again. Your story will change. Another thing that we do that in leash God, in tie God, in limit God, is when we are prayerless. We don't pray. Mm. You on. limit God. Oh man! Don't joke with your prayer life in That's 2023. Right. Be a woman of prayer. Yes. Be a man of prayer, because prayer unleash God. Yes. Amen. Prayer. Yeah. Jabez prayed mm. in Second Chronicles chapter four, verse nine to ten. Yeah. He prayed. Because mommy is calling him Jabez, which means pain, which means shame. Nothing good is coming out of you. Jabez said, I am tired of the God. You need to come into this. He went to God and prayed, and it unleashed God. And the one who was destined to be a man of shame became more honorable than all his brothers. God will make you a star if you unleash yes, right. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Peter was kept in prison. Mm -hmm. But the church said, no way. You killed James? You have arrested Peter? We are not going to hold our peace. They cry unto God. Yeah. And their prayer unleashed God. Yes. Yes. When we pray, prayer is an invitation for God to come to the scene with his power to establish his purpose in your life. Let me say it again. Prayer is an invitation to God to come to your situation with his supernatural power to establish his purpose in your life. So pray on least God to come into your life. And that is why as a child of God, Bible says men ought to pray always. Always. When the Bible says men, it's not just talking about the gender, men female and male. He's talking yeah, about yeah. you, all of us. Yeah. 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 You ought to pray and not to what? Not to faint. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Look at someone and say pray. 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 Do, pray. Do you understand that Bible passage when God said men ought to pray? Do you understand it? Yes. What well, God is saying, I formed you. But I realize that there is something <laughs> not the way I'm expecting it. And the only thing that can fix it is your prayer. Amen. So if you don't pray, you are disabled. You don't get it. Yeah. There is something wrong with you. 
the only thing that will aff that will fix it is your prayer life. Yes. yes. That is why you ought to pray. Yes. To make you who God wants to yes. do. Yes. So if you don't God pray, do there's something not right with your life. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. When you pray, you unleash God to the situation. Yeah. Be a man of prayer. Yeah. yeah. Be a woman of prayer. Amen. Wake up in the morning. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That in the name of Jesus. Right. Pray. 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 Yeah. Pray over your children. Pray over your husband. Yeah. You will be sure. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You need to do something for God to do something. Amen. Nothing just happened. You must position yourself for God to be able to do what He intended to do with your life. Amen. And that is unleashing God into your life. If you unleash Him, He will show up. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody say, let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Come, on, arise. come on, come on. Say, take the limit off and let him arise. Say, say take the limit off. Your, your prayer life will make God arise. When you pray, God will arise. When you believe, God will arise. When you trust him, God will arise. These are the things you do to unleash God for him to arise. And when God is arise, your enemies will be scattered. Don't stop God from arising. Let him arise. Yeah. And when he arises, your enemy will be scattered. Yes, yes. What do I do for God to arise in my marriage? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me get it. Let me go there. 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 Okay. What do I do for God to arise in my marriage? Listen. Men, there's something you need to do. For God to arise in your marriage. You know what it is? To love your wife. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Love your wife, and that will open God. That will unleash God. Yes. To arise in your marriage. Yes. Make sure you love your wife with all your heart. Yes. Don't love him 60%, 70%. She needs 100% love. Amen. That's what a woman is looking for. And if you love a woman, everything is okay with him. Amen. Woman, do you know what to do? To allow God to arise in your marriage life? Do you know it? It's not cooking. It's not food. <laughs> what you do for your God to arise in your marriage as a woman is to treat your husband with the highest respect. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Treat your husband with the highest respect. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Even when your husband is wrong yeah. and you are correcting him, correct him with respect. Yeah. Amen. With love. When your husband is wrong, he's messing up. Don't jump, don't shout. Amen. Do it. I'm not saying don't correct. I'm not saying don't reason. Do it with respect. Yes. And when you respect your man, God will arise in that man. That's, That's how you unleash God in the, yeah, in the home, yeah. in your mind. Yeah. If you don't do that, you are unleashing God. You are unleashing God. You yes, are you are. Unleashing. Amen. Amen. To unleash yes. Him is to love. To unleash yes. Him is to respect. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is somebody following me. Yes. Yes. How do I unleash God? God is unleashed by covenant. Yes. By covenant. When you make covenant with God, you unleash God with your covenant. Covenant. God operates within covenant. God does not operate outside covenant. Somebody say covenant. Covenant. Do you know why God gave Canaan to the people of Israel? It's not because the people of Canaan, the people of Israel, not because they did something supernatural, extraordinary to possess Canaan. But God gave them Canaan because that was a covenant between God and Abraham. Yeah. And God had to respect that covenant and show up. So therefore, God had to fight and make sure the people of Israel have been able to occupy the promised land. Jonathan had a son. His name is called Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. Mephibosheth was crippled. But when David became a king, mm -hmm. David said, is there anything I can do for Jonathan's family, for Saul family, right. because of my covenant, covenant. with Jonathan? Amen. Not because Mephibosheth deserves anything, but because of covenant. Mm -hmm. 
Listen, as we are working with God, the benefit is not only for us. It goes beyond us. It goes to our children. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. I said the benefit go beyond us. You serve God and serve Him right. Make covenant with God. I'm serving with all my heart. And see what God will do with your generation. Okay. That's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. yes. Pastor David why? David why? You have been serving God, educating them. Do you think your family is going to going to be in a disaster? God will take care of them. That's right. Apostle Eugene. Serving God, watch the children. Mm -hmm. Not because the children are doing anything, but because of the covenant yes. of their father. Yes. So what you are doing, do it with your heart. The benefit is not just for you. That's right. That's right. For the next generation. Right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Are you following me? Yes. yes. My baby son is studying mechanical engineering at MIT. Watch this. This year, mechanical engineering class, MIV, chose 16 people. Do you know how many people apply? 2,168. Wow. 2,168. And my son was number three. Yeah. Out of the 2,168 at MIT. Can you imagine that? It's covenant. Yeah, yeah, they are covered yeah. by the sacrifice of their father. Yes. God arise and fight battles for us. Amen. Because of covenant. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So make covenant with God as you serve him. And see whether you unleash God yes. to fight your battles. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Somebody follow him. Yes. 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 Look at somebody and say, unleash him. Unleash him. Unleash him. Unleash him. Unleash him. Unleash him. Say, let God arise. Let God arise. Let God, arise. Let God will arise when there's covenant. He will arise and fight the battle for you. Yes. I pray 2023, you will let God arise. Look yes. at somebody. 2023, yes. let God arise. Say one more time. 2023, let God arise. Say it for the last time. 2023, let God arise. Another thing you can do for God to arise in your finances. Look at somebody say, let God arise in your finances. Let him arise in your finances. Oh, look at us. I need some financial breakthrough. Look at us. I need financial breakthrough. But you have to let God arise. Yes. And fight for you. Yes. And you know how you make God arise in your finances? You make sacrifice. Come on. Yes. Sacrifice. Sometimes you make sacrifice. Yes. Sacrifice is exchanging something for something. That's right. Giving to God something that costs you. Yes. Sacrifice. In the Bible, the nation of Moab was in fight against the people of Israel. Everything was against them, against Moab. All the fight was against them, and the king realized that they can win this battle. You know what he did? He took his son, went on top of the wall, and sacrificed. And when he made that sacrifice, the Bible said the battle turned around. And God start fighting for them against Israel. God respects sacrifice. So unleashing God is not just your mouth. It goes with action. Yes. You have to do something. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I pray that after this convocation, we won't go back and sit where we sit, where we sat. That's right. But we do something new. We'll do something to let God be God in our life. You can't just fly. You can't just drive hours and come here and just receive the word of God and go back and still repeat the things you used to do. Yeah. There must be a change. Yeah. Yeah. We must see God in our churches. We must see God in our life. We must see God in everything that we do. We must see the power yeah. of God, the move of God. The whole world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. God wants to use us to fulfill his glory. God wants to use us to bless us. Why do we want to unleash God that his glory must be seen. Yes. Brothers and sisters, everything we do is for the glory. Yes. God is interested yes. that we bring
bring glory to his name. God is waiting for us to bring glory to his name. That is why we have to unleash him for, for, for we to be used by him to be a blessing so that glory will come to God. Amen. Your life must be glory to God. Galatians chapter 1 verse 24. Paul said, I have been glorified because I, uh, the Lord is being glorified because of me. Someone put it on the screen for me. Galatians chapter 1 verse 24. The Lord is being glorified because of me. Let, let the name of God be glorified because of your attitude, because of your behavior. Let God be God. Let God name be glorified. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody say, let God arise. And let God. Stop, stop tying the hand of God. Untie the hand of God. Stop limiting God. No more. No more. Don't limit God anymore. Let God be God. And let God do what he intends to do in your life. 2023, you are on God's timetable for supernatural miracle. 2023, God wants to do supernatural work with you. 2023, God wants to use you. God wants to use GC to the next level. GCMN must move to the next level. And it can only happen when we unleash, when we allow God, when we let him, let him, let him arrive. When we, are, when we let him, look at someone say, let him, let him, let him. If you let him, you arrive. If you allow him, you arrive. If you unleash him, he's arrive. God is ready to fight for you. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. Now what this? What this? What this? Exodus, chapter number fifteen. Come on, Exodus, the book of Exodus, Exodus, chapter number fifteen, Exodus, chapter number fifteen, verse number three. Let's hear the word of God. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. Okay, come on, let's read together. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord. Look at someone say, "My God is a fighter." Look at someone "My God is a fighter." God is a fighter. Hey, hey, hey. My God is who? He's a fighter. Amen. That is why you have to unleash him to fight for you. Amen. Listen, the battle is too much for you. You can't fight it yourself. And God said, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting to fight the battle for you. But you have to allow me. You have to permit me. You need to unleash me to fight. Can I talk to somebody? There's so many battles that is going on in your life. You have no idea. You don't have an idea. The battle that God is fighting for you. But if you allow God, if you allow him, he will fight fight unseen battles for you. He will win victories for your life. God is ready to fight. He's a fighter. God is a warrior. And I, can, I, can I talk to somebody? Anybody with a vision, anybody with a future, anybody with a destiny, you have a contender to fight you. Can I talk to somebody again? Anybody who has a future, Anybody who have a vision, anybody who want to succeed in life, there is somebody who is a contender. He's trying to fight you. Somebody is trying to fight where you are going. Somebody is trying to fight your success. Somebody is trying to stop you from fulfilling your dream. And you can sit down and rock in a chair doing nothing. God said, let me fight the battle for you. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principality. And God said, I'm ready. I've been longing to fight you. I've been waiting to fight for you. You. Look at someone say, release God and let me fight for you. Remember, come and say, release him, release him, release him. You allow him, allow him, allow him. Permit him, permit him, permit him. And when you permit him, he will arise and the enemies will be scattered. Allow God to arise and the enemies will be scattered. As soon as Jesus Christ was born, there was a contender. Yes, right. Herod. Herod. Yeah. Herod said, no way. All children at the age of two and below within the vicinity of Bethlehem should be killed. Mm -hmm. But God know how God. to fight. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. When Jesus was born, there was a contender. David prayed, trying to understand the vision and the revelation. And the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel, when Daniel prayed, Talking about Daniel, not David. When Daniel prayed, the prince of the kingdom of Persia yep. said, I'm not going to allow it. Yeah. There's somebody trying to stop you Come on. from fulfilling your vision. Oh, yeah. Listen, being here, somebody doesn't like it. I know. Mm -hmm. Being here, mm -hmm. somebody don't want it. Mm -hmm. What you are receiving, somebody doesn't like it. Okay. So you can receive and receive and you go home and you do nothing with it. 
Because in the first place, somebody even don't like you coming here. That's why you almost stop coming. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Amen. Yes. Every success, every dream, every vision, there is a contender. Somebody will fight it. That's why you must allow God to fight for you. That's right. First Kings chapter number one, verse eleven to thirteen. Bathsheba gave birth to a son called Solomon. Solomon was supposed to be the yes. next king. David gave him a promise. Mm-hmm. When I'm dead and gone, yeah. your son, I don't need you, mm-hmm. will be the next king. Amen. This was the king's old man, David old man. My son with Bathsheba, called Solomon, will be the next king. Yeah. As soon as David made that pronouncement, yeah. one of David's sons, a stepbrother to Adonijah, right. make himself a king. That's right. That's right. And say, I would rather sit on the throne. Mm-hmm. Somebody want to sit on your blessing. Mm-hmm. Somebody want to sit on your promotion. Don't sit down and take things for granted. That's right. There's battles that are going on. Amen. Yes. And God said, let me fight for you. Yes, yes. thank you. Lord. Let me fight for you. Thank you Father. And because God wants to fight for you, that is why you have to let him arise. Yes. yes. Let him arrive to fight the battle for you. Yes. So many things is going on behind the scene, and mm-hmm. let God fight for you. Look at your neighbor and say, Let God fight the battle Let's for you. The yeah. battle yeah. at your workplace, yeah. your battle in your marriage, yeah. the battle in your Come neighborhood, the yes. even in the church, some battles oh. are going on. Yeah. And the only person who can fight the battle for you is God. Oh. So God said, Oh, leave me. And let me arise. And let me arise. The people of Israel, you have been through so much, and the enemy said, like defeating you, defeating you because number one, you are not working with me, number two, you are forgotten me, number three, you don't believe in me, number four, you don't trust me. That is why you are going through what you're going through. Yeah. But if you let me, yeah. I I will fight for you yes. and your enemies yes. will be scattered. Yes. I came this morning to challenge all those oh, who are under this convocation. God wants to fight for you in 2023. Yes. Give him opportunity. Yes. Let him fight for you. Yes. Let him give you the victory. Yes. Let him do the victory. Yes. Let him do the battle. The battle is not on the yes. battle, it's on the Lord. Yes. Look at someone and say, God is fighting for me. He's going to fight for me. Come, come on. Give someone and say, let go, let go, let, let, go. let, let him. Come on, come on, look at someone say, let go, let go, let go fight the battle. Look at someone and say, and say, let go fight the battle. Let go, let go, let go. Yeah. Nehemiah said, I'm going to build the broken wall of Jerusalem. As soon as Nehemiah set his mind to build the wall of Jerusalem, Salam. Sambala, Tobiah, and say, you will not build this wall. What were you doing when the world was down? You were doing nothing. Now I'm here to build a wall. You say you're fighting me? Mm. Yes. Mm. When you're doing nothing, the devil is not worried about you. Right. When you start doing something, that's, right. that's when the devil will come after you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Listen, if the devil is not coming after you, it means you are doing nothing. Yes. Come on. Come on. You are doing nothing. Right. You won't waste resources on you because you're doing nothing. But try to do something for God. Yeah. He will rise against you. Yes, he will. That is why God said, Let me, let me, let me. I've been longing to fight for you. I see you fighting yourself, and I've been longing watching you. But let me do it for you. Thank you, Lord. And if you allow God, He will fight the battle for you. And your story will change. That's right. 2023, you, let your story change by allowing God to arise. Don't hold him back. Don't limit him. <laughs> untie him. You have tied God for too long. Untie him. Unleash him. And let him arise. If you unleash him, you arise. If you permit him, you arise. If you allow him, you arise. If you take that limit off, you arise. This morning, God said, let me arise and do the warfare. Because I am a man of war. Amen. We will allow God to fight the battle for you. There's nothing too hard that God can do. Yes. That's right. Amen. For time sake, let me give you the last quotation and I close. And God said, if you allow me to arise, 
I will do Ezekiel chapter number 12, verse 22 to 25 for you. And I close with this. Somebody say, let God arise. Let God arise. Look at your neighbor, give your neighbor half and say, God is going to arise in my life. Yes. Yes. Going to arise. Yes. Going to arise. Yes. <laughs> Come on, can we all read it? Psalm, Ezekiel 12, 22, we read it to 25. Come on, let's read it together. Son of man, what is this problem that we have in the land of Israel? Say, the days are prolonged and every vision Fail it. Ah, there's something going on. People are saying things about you, and you have become a prophet. Do you know what is called prophet? Things that people used to say. People are saying, Christians, you are not progressing. People are saying it. You go to church, but nothing good is coming out of you. <laughs> people are making more people of the church. Mm. People are mocking, making more people of your Jesus, life. Jesus. You become a prophet. Everybody is saying about that thing. They're talking about something people everybody say that become a proverb and the bible say that pro- i will make this proverb to cease mm-hmm. all the reproach will cease if allow god to arise yeah. let god arise and the reproaches will cease yes lord 2023 20, don't take life casual let god fight for you mm-hmm. because if you take life casual you become a casualty Yes, sir, that's good. Yeah. If you take life casual, you become a casualty. Amen. Don't take life casual. Let God fight for you. Amen. Yes. If you approach life aggressively, you will remove the reproach. That's right. Yes. If you approach it, you will remove it. So approach life and say, God, you need to fight this battle for me. So he said, number one, the problem will cease, and then there shall be no, they shall not use it again. What well, people are using against you, they won't use it again because God is going to make it work. Going to God is going to make it work. Seeds, but uh, uh, and the days are at hand. Okay. Oh, you move. You where? Where are you? Twelve. To, oh, you move to twenty three. Okay. Okay. So let's go to twenty three. Okay. Go to twenty four. Go to twenty four. Go to twenty four. Let's read together. For there shall be no more any temptation. No fatal revelation within the house of Israel. Come on, go to 25. Let me finish quick. 25. Now what is this? 25. Let's read together. For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I speak shall come to pass. Wow. It shall be no more prolonged. Someone say no more delay. For in your days of rebellious house will I say the word and will perform it. Says the Lord, oh, if God arrives, whatever He says, He will perform it because we are not going to tell Him anymore. And God watch at His word to perform it. When God speaks, whatever the word will go, He follow it to make sure that the word come to pass. I came this morning to announce you whatever God has said concerning you, it shall come to pass. Amen. Look at someone and say, No more delay. No more no delay. More come on, tell some people, no, no more, more delay in 2020. God is removing all the delays in your life. Because if you let God arise, there will be no more what? Delay. When God arises, there will be no more delay. For the last time, when God arises, there will be no more delay. Verse 28, we close. Verse 28, now what this? Verse 28, this is my last verse. Let's all read together. Therefore, say unto them, say unto GCMF, that says the Lord, GCMF, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore, but the word whom I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord, GCMF. Put your hands together for the Lord. Whatever God has said concerning GCMF will no longer be prolonged. Right. Whatever God has said concerning your life will no longer be pro- prolonged. If you allow God to arise, if you unleash Him, if you permit Him, if you allow Him, if you stop limiting God, He will arise and there will be no more delays in your life. I cancel delays. There will be no more delays. God said everything I said, it shall come to pass. May you experience performance. May you experience miracle. May you experience breakthrough. May you experience favor in the year 2023. All because of his glory. All because of his glory. God wants his name to be honored. God wants his name to be glorified. 
2023, God wants to use you to bring glory to His name. Yeah. God wants to use you yeah. to honor His name. When we praise yeah. our Father, who art in heaven, and Lord be their name, reverence His name, honor His name. May the name of the Lord be honored because you have allowed God to arise yeah. and the enemies are scattered. Come on, rise on your feet. Walk for, to four people and say, Brother, let God arise in your life. Come on, walk to four people. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Come on, walk to four people. Let God arise. Permit him. Permit me. Permit him to arise. Allow him to arise. Unleash him to arise. Come on, go to four people. Unleash God to arise. Permit God to arise. Unleash him to arise. Permit him to arise. Go to four people, unleash God to arise, permit him to arise, allow him to arise, and when he arise, the enemies will be scattered. There will be no more delay, there will be no more delay. The Lord performance shall be seen in your life. Come on, shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, arise, arise in my life. Oh Lord, arise in my life. Oh Lord, arise, 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 arise. And do the supernatural. And do the supernatural. Oh God, arise. 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 Ramasu Kotolo Prosika. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Cry unto God. If God arise, if you allow him, if you permit him, if you unleash him, he will arise. Arise, O oh God. Arise, arise, arise. Let the enemy flee before me. Let the enemy be melted. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Oh God, arise in my marriage. Arise in my finances. Arise in my family. Oh God, arise. Fight the battle for me. You are God of war. You are God of war fight the battle for the in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus cast on no Mm. Mm. Lisa, come, come to the keyboard. Give me some yes. few keys quietly. Come on, sir. begin to thank God in your spirit. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody here the Lord showed me this morning. You have a problem with your sugar level. You have sugar issue. I don't know what it is, but it has to be related to sugar. I want you to come to the altar. I want to pray for you right now. Yes, Jesus. I have something that is related to sugar. Yes, Lord. It has to do with sugar. Yes, Lord. Come, I want to pray for you. Yes, Lord. Four people, four things the Lord showed me this morning. And I want to pray. The first one has to do with Shiva. I brought all this oil from Africa. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. I came with this oil. And somebody brought it to me from Israel. I kept it for almost a year. But when I was coming, preparing myself, do my heart, go with this oil. I'm praying over this oil. I'm going to anoint you with this oil. Jesus. May the Lord act his healing power. Yes. Whatever challenge you are having with your sugar, God is a healer. Yes, Lord. He's a miraculous. Yes, Lord. Power in his life. I need some very strong ushers. Very strong ones. Very strong, strong, strong ushers. Father, perform a healing. I come before you, God. Let your healing power manifest in the life of these people. I speak to their sugar level. Bring their sugar level to control. In the name of Jesus. 
devil, you cannot take advantage of this. Anything who have become a contender, we crush that contender. In the name of Jesus. Mama Leandere Come close a little bit. Take a step forward. I speak healing nobody. Oshes, please help me. In the name of Jesus. Oshes, please help me. Oshes, please help me. Oshes, please help me. Oshes, please, please. Kato. I speak healing nobody. I speak healing nobody. The Lord is touching me. We see that healing in the name of Jesus. We see that healing in the name of Jesus. Give me. Take it. 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 I will Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, man. If you are there, the second thing is something related with your heart. It's related with your heart. It's related with your heartbeat. You have short breath. Please come to my right side. I want to pray for you. You are already on the floor. The Spirit of God will still be watching on you. Come to my right side here. It has to be with your, your heart. Yes. yes. Your brain. Yes. Short brain. Masande <laughs> Reba. to do, I say four things the Lord showed to me. The third one had to do with restoration. You are believing God for God to restore something. The second thing, the third thing the Lord showed me is about restoration. Some people need restoration in their life. Please come to the altar. I want to pray for you. Restoration. Restoration. If you're already on the floor, I pray for you. It covers that. Restoration. Something led you, lost something spiritually, physical. But the third thing the Lord showed me was about restoration. God had to do restoration in your life to restore something. Restoration. 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 Lama Sandere Robo. Have to do with restoration. 
Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Behold your daughter. Oh, she's Let's stretch our hand towards our brother. One of our brothers have had heart surgery. Mm. And he's believing God for a miracle. Yes, Lord. May God give our brother a new heart. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we're using our brother Ken to represent to at the point of contact. Yes, Lord. So let's stretch our hand towards Ken. Thank father, you, Lord. Yes, yes, Father. In the name of Jesus. Whatever he is on the hospital. Oh, I say restoration. Restoration. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Receive him. Mili mama shandere brokoto. Rabba baliambo shandere brokoto. Watch this, please watch, 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 watch this, watch this. The presence of God is all over the place. So watch this, please watch. Every usher be alert. Hala mama shandere, mili mama shandere, baby God, arise, arise, arise. Fight your battle, fight your battle. We will unleash you, we will unleash you. Arise, oh God. Baba 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 you are unleashed, you are unleashed. Arise of God and fight the battle. Liba Baba Shandere Kete. Ima Suandere Brosiki. Ma Sandere Breme Meshekete. Ila Baba 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 now everybody listen there's the fourth one and that's the key the Lord spoke to me and if you look at our church calendar because of the Lord spoke we named the year 2023 as a year of abundant grace and overflow yes. because that's the exact way God gave to me three ways abundant grace and overflow the third prayer, the fourth prayer is God asked me to do is to anoint you for abundance and overflow. If you are believing God for, for a breakthrough, financial breakthrough, but the thing is this, God said, I will bless you for you to be a blessing. So the blessing is not for you to lift up your shoulder. 
God is going to bless you for two things to bring glory to his name and to be a blessing. I say it again. God is going to do it for two reasons to bring glory to his name. Yeah. To bring glory to his name and for you to be a blessing. And if that has been your desire, you believe in God for it. Come, I will just touch you and go and sit down. Take it in the name of Jesus. God is so good. You're so good to me. your right hand. I have yes. 15 minutes for my time. Yes. Yes. Lift up your right hand. Yes. I will leave the spirit of abundance yes. over your congregation. Yes. God, we allow you. Lord, we permit you to arise and do what we cannot do for us. Lord, do it. Our confidence and our trust in you. Hey, you can do it. You can do it. Lord, do it. You can do it. Lord, do it. Do it. Abundance. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Show yourself strong. Show yourself strong, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, on earth. Let a church say, Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Go to your seat. God bless you. One more thing I'll do and I'll close. I still have about 30 minutes more. God bless you. I want to challenge you, Oshes. Oshes, bring me an offering emblem. Bring me some emblems. Give me about 20 emblems. Mr. George, hello. Give me about 20 2 0 emblems. Are you able to watch? If you give me 25, that will be okay. I'm waiting for them, Yes, yes. I want to challenge you to sow a seed. Don't give a normal offering. I want you to sow a seed. Make a sacrifice. Oh, yes. Establish a covenant. Giving a covenant offering. A special seed. I'm giving a special seed. I'm making this sacrifice. God, will you show yourself strong? May this be a covenant offering. 
challenging you to sow a seed for this convocation, a seed of hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. And if you are led, if you can't, nobody is pushing you, but I'm challenging you. Come from an envelope. Come and pick one envelope for me for hundred dollars. If you can do it, if you cannot, nobody is forcing you. But I tell you, it will bless you. Yes. You see what the Lord will do for you. If you can do it, don't sit down watching people do it. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. It will bless you. Bless your life. Make your check payable to GCMF. God bless you. Yes. I've anointed that, but intentionally did that. Yes. Hold on, my son. It's funny because I'm Watch what the Lord will do. Making a sacrificial offering, you make a covenant offering and speak over it. I have eight minutes, so I'm giving you just three minutes to finish it. Bless. Hear the cry, hear the need behind what they are doing. There's a reason for what they are doing. Lord, they shall cry. Hear their cry. If you're done with it, come and drop it on the altar. Let me prove it and I hand over my microphone. I have seven minutes more for my time. God bless you. with your attitude and behavior. Allow him. God, show up with this covenant offering. Show up with this same offering. Stretch your hand towards here. Father, now on this altar, cry over this sin. There is need behind this sin. Lord, answer by fire. Answer suddenly. Let your people see your hand at work. We unleash you in our finances. Show us. Bless us. Let abundant grace be our portion. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Father, for the answer and prayer. In Jesus' name. Let someone say, Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Let God arise. Say, permit him to arise. Say, take the limit off from him 
and let him do what he knows to do best. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's welcome the president. Woke up this morning as I was coming. <coughs> the Lord said there's going to be a sowing of seeds. And whenever a farmer sows seeds, he doesn't do it in vain. Amen. The rest of the farmer goes out and plants a seed without expectation of an abundance crop. I've been in the farming country all my life. I do not know anyone who did not walk over that field and take a look. And he saw the crop coming out of the ground. Amen. First it was just a little soft and then it was warm. We're going to see an abundance of the power of God released. Released as we permit the Holy Spirit to move through each and every one. And I just, uh, so we want to sing to him. I see in the spirit the crops already growing. I see the fruit coming to fulfill. I see, you know, the Bible says the harvesters will overtake the source. Hallelujah. So we're going to give praise as we close. As nobody's in a hurry anyhow. We're going to sing this song. And we're going to sing it. And after this song, do you have instruction for them? There's something here for you to eat. We're going to have fish and we're going to have other things. But as we sing this song, we are singing with a grateful heart for the multiplication of the seeds and the releasing of His Spirit. So let's do it with great joy yes. and excitement. I love you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 